Good morning, it's time for a cup of comments. I want to be a cup of joe, the first sip in the morning. Alright, where was I? Where was I? Okay, Thomas Jacob says, I own zero books and do it all on my one form of technology, a Samsung Galaxy S6. Rebecca Christopher says, same here, I read all my books on my iPhone, I borrow digital copies from the library. It's not about the physical copy of a book or even a digital copy, it's about whatever you love about that book being in your mind and your spirit, so it is with you wherever you are. Okay, so I am starting to kind of agree with you guys. I mean, I'm not saying that I don't like reading physical books over digital ones. I do. I prefer to hold a di physical book, but that doesn't mean I have to own the book. Like, why not check it out from a library or borrow it or something like that? For the first time in my life, I can actually see myself going book free and just not owning books and maybe borrowing from the library or buying them used and then reselling them <laughs> if I actually would do that. So I see what you guys are getting at, but I don't know. I still, uh, I'm still not on the read it all digitally boat. I'm not quite there. Maybe I will be eventually. I don't know. All right, Safe Pet Haven says, I understand that some physical books are very personal. Is that particular copy of the works of Shakespeare a special edition or a gift from a dear one? No, it is not. If not, and you just get an urge to read one of his plays, there should be numerous copies in any local library or certainly free online in digital form. You're right. If I ever want to read Shakespeare, I could just look it up online. It's out there. I could go to the library. You're right. You're absolutely right. I don't- I have no defense. I have no excuse. I just like having it, I guess. I don't- mm. Karen says, very proud of you, Joe. It inspires me to donate some more books. Thank you, Karen. Myla M says, you have a degree in drama? That is really cool. Is that what you teach? When I heard you saying it, I thought no one can be miserable teaching drama. I wish I had studied that. No, unfortunately, I do not teach drama. In fact, I wish I did. I'm a youth minister, so I teach religion, I guess you could say, Catholic theology, and I run our school's lunchroom. So I teach cafeteria, I teach how to eat crap food provided by the government. I feel like teaching drama is the one thing that I would actually enjoy teaching, but uh, drama teaching jobs are few and far between. And I don't have a teaching certificate license thingy, so well, that's not probably gonna happen anytime soon. On my Jesus and Minimalism video, Ross R says, I do agree the story is about getting rid of material things, but the second part, and give the money to the poor, is not to be ignored. You make a great point, because it's not just about getting rid of all the things you own, it's about giving to the poor, so you can't like own nothing and then have like a billion dollars in your bank account. Like The idea is to give it all to people who need it and go with as little as you can. Jacob Erickson says, no Bible, Joe? No, I do not own a Bible. I am Catholic, and so as Catholics, we don't really pay much that attention to the Bible. I mean, it's a good, like, background thing, but we've actually written our own books and have our own findings that are just more better. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yes, I do have a Bible, but it was not on my bookshelf because I actually keep it with me a lot of the time. So it's, like, on my nightstand or in my bag or whatever which kind of makes the case that it's probably the only book that I really need to own because it's the one book that I actually do use. So, yeah. Joe. Alex J says, Hey Joe, a few videos ago you talked about buying used books online. Have you checked out Little Free Libraries? After you said this, I did check it out and there is a Little Free Library. What Little Free Libraries are is, I don't know if this is like a nationwide thing in the US or what, but it's just like people set up these little stands. They look kind of like birdhouses, just like a box on a pole. This is the box, this is the pole. And basically, you just put a book in if you have a book you don't want anymore, and you take a book out if one looks interesting to you. And there is one near me, and they're super cool, so thank you for that. Also, as a theater kid, it was hard for me to get rid of my Shakespeare as well, but guess what? They are public domain, so you can read any of his work online for free. That made tossing the huge collected works a lot easier. You're right, even though I just talked about this, you're, you guys are so right. Like, <laughs> you can just you can just look, and if you want it physically, you can just hit print. I mean, why, why, why? Matthew D.N. Parsons says, Not the books! I dig that stacked flat book towers look one sometimes see. You're right. It is books. You know, here's the thing about books. There is something about being in a room full of books. There's something about being in a library or having your own personal library. A room just full of books. I don't know. It just makes you like, it's inspiring. It makes you want to read. Stacks of books are 
cool, if not dangerous, but it's not necessary. I mean, I'm. it's possible I might be moving soon. I don't want to have to have a room full of books. Do you know how heavy books are? They're freaking heavy. Uh-huh, uh-uh-uh-uh. Okay, this is a good one. <clears throat> Kim Kelly says, My two daughters, age 10 and 7, have been collecting books, unwilling to give them away, but slowly opening up to the idea. At their school, every child is given at least two new books a year. Also, once a week, two books are given to children as rewards for good schoolwork or good behavior. My girls are very proud of these books. They have accepted the idea of letting go of some of these books, but I struggle with teaching them the value of things, but that it is also okay to give things away or donate them. The books the schools give out are paid for by businesses who support a books in the home scheme. Its goal is to ensure that all children have books of their own to encourage reading. I think it's a great thing, but am I undermining the books in the home by asking the girls not to keep the books? This is a really good question and something that Aaron and I have talked about sort of before because one of the ways to encourage kids to read is to have books around for them to read. Like I've seen like famous people or people who have been very successful say that like one of the things that inspired them was the books that they read growing up that they're you know maybe their parents kept a lot of books around on this topic or that topic and they encouraged them to learn and to grow. So is it kind of bad to have your kids get rid of books? And I don't think that it is bad because guess what? Depending on where you live, there are these things called libraries. And at these libraries, your kids can go and see all of the books and be just as inspired and be able to pick up these different books. You as a parent can recommend books or give them this book or that book. The initiative that your school is doing is awesome and I don't think that they should stop or that they're doing something wrong, but I think that the point of that is for people whose kids aren't going to encourage them to read. So that's for kids who parents maybe can't afford to buy them books or parents who don't value reading. That's great for those kids and those kids should build up their little library because that's going to help them to read. But for people, like it sounds like you already encourage reading, You don't. your kids don't need to own books. It's great to read books, it's great to use the book as a tool, and then when you're done with that tool, put it back where it belongs so that someone else can use it. So give it back to the library, sell it online. Everything that we own, we are preventing someone else from using. So if we aren't going to be using it, if that's a book collecting dust on your shelf, which I'm guilty of this, my books are collecting dust, and if I'm not using them, I should get rid of them. I feel like I'm using them, but am I? So I would say you're not undermining the program because the idea of the program is to foster a love of reading for your kids, and it sounds like you are already doing that. So I would say give someone else a chance to read that book, kiddos. Give it away, so let them enjoy it. And if it's your favorite book, if you read it every day, yeah, hang on to it. Use it until you're done with it, and then let it go. Lisa D says, I feel you on the Shakespeare collection. I got handed down a really nice vintage looking one. I think four volumes in total. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. But I sold it last year because I had read only two of the plays, I think. But it was one of the books that I had a bit of a hard time letting go of. But I haven't missed it ever since. That's all, like a four. Oh, I love I, I love like those old looking books like Leather Bound or Us. Oh, but and you know, you said you only read two of the plays. I have considered maybe choosing, I mean, my favorite Shakespeare play thus far is Hamlet. I haven't even read them all. Like, I wanted to at least go through each of the plays and just read them all at least once, then maybe pick out one or two of my favorites and just buy those and own those and let the full collection go. And I haven't even gotten that far, so obviously, I mean, why do I still have this book? But thank you. Thank you for your encouraging comments. I feel like I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> CMS Sultana says, I like keeping the odd reference book like your Shakespeare because sometimes it's nice to be totally offline and just wander through a volume like that on a lazy afternoon. And that's kind of, that is kind of like why I'm keeping it, I think, is I like, and I do every once in a while, like, it, I keep it by my bed, my, all my books are by my bed, and I'll keep it, and I'll pick it up, and I'll, like, just browse through, and then I just set it back down. I don't actually start reading any of the plays, but I don't know. You're, uh, that is, you're right, it is nice to leaf through them, but is it worth keeping for that purpose? That I don't know. Matthew D. N. Parsons says, watching this, this being those clips of different videos I've been in, and I think he's referencing uh, the video I was in in college, Subterfuge. He says, I had a vision of SJ as a TV detective who solves cases by minimalizing the crime scene situation, etc. Oh my gosh, yes, I could totally be that. I could totally do that. It's like, you take out this, and this is unnecessary, and this evidence is no good, and, and then you're down to the one obvious proof. 
It's a great idea. It's golden. Victoria Matter says preschool curriculum is very important and is supposed to involve a lot of play. Check out creative curriculum. I did kind of check out creative curriculum. Here's a problem with curriculums in general, but especially a preschool curriculum. Oh my gosh. Literally preschool. If the, For those of you not in the U.S., what we call preschool is when your kids like, I don't know, four and you put them in. It's, it's like daycare, but with learning. So it's like they're not quite in school yet, but it's still kind of school like. OK, I thought that's what kindergarten was. Kin OK, we have in the US, we have grades one through 12, right? The very beginning is grade one. That's why it's number one. And then you go all the way to the end of high school, grade 12, and you're done. Except now you're not because you're expected to go to college. But we're just going to ignore that for now. Then they came out with kindergarten, which apparently, I don't know, Germans, did you invent kindergarten? Because kindergarten is what, German for a garden of kids, I guess? But if you look into a kindergarten, it doesn't look like that. It looks exactly like first grade. So now kindergarten has sort of become the new first grade. It used to be, you know, kind of prepare you to start school, but now it just is school. Kindergarten is the new grade one. And now preschool is becoming, it, preschool became the new kindergarten. And now preschool is becoming the new grade one, making kindergarten the new grade two. It's like, it's all messed up. People, people, these kids are four years old. They're four. They don't need a curriculum. They don't need to be like taught in this artificial manner. They just need to play and experience life. They didn't go to school to learn to walk, did they? No, no one taught them how to speak. They learned it through osmosis. They learned what interested them, what excited them, and then they learned how to do it and did it. And that is just, I don't know. No, I'm sorry, I cannot. And you say that it's supposed to involve a lot of play. Why does a curriculum, a regimented curriculum, need to involve play? It's silly. It's just so silly. Just let your kids be kids, people. They don't need, they don't, they don't need it. I barely have any water left. Leave me more comments if you got more comments. Leave me some questions if you got some questions. This has been your cup of joe. I want be your cup of joe. Your first sip in the morning. You get your going ritual. Love you, bye.